In the last video, we went over the assumptions required for valid inference from a simple linear model. Let's for the moment assume these are reasonable and finally have a look at the output of the model, called a regression table. This might look like a lot at first, but the most important part is here in the middle, the coefficients. I'm going to show our output in this video, but in Python, you're basically looking at the same thing. To understand what we're looking at, let's draw the estimated relationship using this coefficients table. In the first row, we have the intercept, which is apparently around 132. This is where the line starts. In the second row, we have the slope, which is the average change in height when weight increases by one kilogram. This is about half a centimeter. Now, half a centimeter is barely visible in this plot. So an easier way to interpret it in this case is that 100 kilogram larger weight is associated with about 50 centimeters greater height. And together, these two values define our regression line. So what about the rest of the table? Next to the estimates, we see their standard errors. This is the uncertainty of the estimates. It is used to compute confidence intervals, which show you a plausible range of values for the regression line, prediction intervals, which show you where to expect observations, and the t-value, which is also shown in the third column. The t-value is a measure of how rare this result would be under the null hypothesis, which states that the true value for this parameter is zero. For the intercept, this is rarely an interesting test, unless you specifically want to know whether the intercept differs from zero. So most of the time, you can safely ignore this. But for the slope, differing from zero means that there is a slope, and therefore a correlation between these variables. So this is actually useful information. In this case, the slope has a t-value of 4.3. So what does that mean? How rare is that under the null hypothesis? That is what the p-value tells you, which is shown in the fourth column. Apparently, if the null hypothesis were true, you'd have a 0.02% chance of drawing a sample with this large a t-value for the slope. That is pretty rare, so maybe this null hypothesis isn't what generated the results. And we say we have a significantly non-zero slope for weight. That is a quick summary of how significance testing works. We'll have a look at it in more depth once we get to the topic of comparisons. That concludes the coefficients, but what about the rest of the regression table? Is there anything in there we need? The top part is the call made to R, literally just telling you which model you fit. This is occasionally useful in larger analyses where you have multiple models as a reminder of which one you just printed a summary of. But other than that, there is no useful information here. The next part is a summary of the residuals. One of the assumptions for valid inference is that the error term in the model follows a normal distribution, which means it should be symmetrically distributed, in which case the mean is equal to the median. The mean of the residuals is by definition zero, so you could check if the median is also close to zero, or whether the first and last 25% of residuals are more or less equally far away, or whether the extremes are of the same order of magnitude. But even if all of those things are true, that doesn't necessarily mean the residuals are approximately normally distributed, just that the distribution is more or less symmetric. There are much better ways to check distributional assumptions, which we'll see in the next video. So as far as I'm concerned, this is another part of the table you can safely ignore. The same goes for this part under the coefficients. Just ignore it. All it shows is a simplification of the p-values, where one star is less than 0.05, two stars less than 0.01, etc. This might help as a visual guide when you're dealing with very large regression tables, but it isn't adding any new information. And in your report, you should mention the actual p-values anyway. That brings us then to the last part of the table, which does actually provide some useful information. At the top, we see the standard deviation of the residuals. This is the extent to which individual observations differ from the regression line. It is the estimate of sigma in this normal distribution we assume for the error term. Now, standard deviation and standard error are two entirely different things. 
So why is it called residual standard error if it shows a standard deviation? Some digging in the help files reveals that it is just an old misnomer left behind from the early days of R and its predecessing language S. I can't say I really understand this decision to leave it in, but anyway, we're stuck with it. The output calls a residual standard error, and from now on, you're going to read it as residual standard deviation, because it shows you the spread in the residuals. So how much do individual observations tend to differ from the line? The next part shows the residual degrees of freedom. Remember, residual just means what is left behind. So this shows you how many degrees of freedom we have left. The more observations you have, the more parameters you can estimate. This number, the residual degrees of freedom, shows how much freedom you have left to estimate additional parameters. Something that will become important once we start adding more explanatory variables to our model called multiple linear regression. But just to show you where this number comes from, we had 30 observations and we estimated two parameters, the intercept and the slope. So that means there are 28 degrees of freedom left. On the next line, we see the R squared value for our model. This is the proportional variance in the outcome that is explained by our model. So in this case, the model explains about 40% of the total variance in height. The higher this number, the stronger the association between the variables. Let me also show you visually how to interpret R squared. The observations have different outcomes. So there is a certain spread, a variance in the outcome. But once we take into account the effect of the explanatory variable, you can see that the remaining variance along the regression line is smaller than the original variance in the outcome. That means our model explains a certain proportion of the total variance in the outcome. We call this proportion R squared. Once we get to multiple linear regression, you'll see that when you add more explanatory variables to your model, R squared will always, by definition, improve. But it might not actually be worth adding more variables if the improvement is small. That is why the table also shows R squared adjusted, which is used to compare models of different complexity to see whether adding a variable explains significantly more variance. But again, this won't become relevant until we get to multiple linear regression. In the last line of the regression table, we see the results of an F test. F tests are used to compare variances. So in this case, the total variance in the outcome is compared to the remaining variance in the residuals after fitting the model. If the test is significant, like it is in the example here, then you could say your model has significant explanatory power over the outcome. Now, you may have noticed this p-value is the same as that of the slope. That is no coincidence. In simple linear regression, you only have one explanatory variable, only one slope. So if that variable has a significant slope, that is the explanatory value of your model. So for simple linear regression, this F-test does not really add anything to the story. In summary then, regression tables might look a little bit intimidating at first, but most of the time you're only looking at the coefficients and maybe the bottom part to assess the fit. All these test statistics and p-values are based on the underlying assumptions of a simple linear model. So in the next video, I'll show you how you can assess whether these assumptions are reasonable.